Alright, what's good everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Valentine. Today, we are predicting the 2023 NFL season, New Orleans Saints edition, obviously. So, last night the schedules came out, and the playoff predictor that I've used in previous years has updated. So, without further ado, we got the entire 2023 Saints schedule here, and we're going to predict it. So... Week one, okay, that fucks something up. Week one, the Tennessee Titans visit the New Orleans Saints. Saints start up with a home game, first home game that they've had to open the season since 2019 against the Texans. I think that this is a very good game for both teams to get caught up to speed in certain aspects. For example, Tennessee's revamped their offensive line almost entirely. And New Orleans has revamped their defensive line nearly entirely. So that'll be a pretty fun matchup in the trenches. I do believe the Saints have the edge at literally every position besides defensive line. So, Saints got a better quarterback. Saints got a better receiving core. Other than running back, obviously. I believe the Saints have a better running back duo and core than the, the Titans do. You know, with Tajay Spears being unproven, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to, to give that side of things. You know, you got Kendrick Miller in the Saints room as well. So, you got, a, you got a lot of stuff there that the Saints have better than the Titans right now. You know, they got better corners. Not better safeties, but better corners. So, I'm going to give the first game of the season to the Saints. And I believe... Derek Carr shows that he might have a good season here. In week two, this is the game that we always lose against the Panthers. It's always the game that we lose. It always stops us from going on a good run. So, I think tradition sticks, maybe. And the Panthers beat us there. Realistically, we're going to do that. Up here in week three, we got the Saints versus Jordan Love. Unproven quarterback and avoiding cold weather. Early morning game, I believe. Yep. Yeah, so, afternoon game. The Saints definitely pull this one out. Week 4 the same way. There's no quarterback for Tampa right now. Uh, Baker Mayfield, not that great. Kyle Trask, if you want to go there, not that great. Uh, in New England, we got Mac Jones. We got Bailey Zappi. We got, I think they took someone else in the draft, too, that I don't think is going to be starting anytime soon. So we're just going to... Ballpark and say Matt, uh, Mac Jones. But New Orleans takes this game as well. They start off 4 1. They face the revamped Texans. They'll take the W here. Take the L to the Jaguars, who are growing right now. Um, beat Indianapolis. Beat Chicago. I'm going to say lose to Minnesota. Go to the bye week. Face Atlanta. We're going to get a win over Atlanta. Scroll down here. In Detroit, the um, revenge game for Jamal Williams. Revenge game for Chauncey Gardner Johnson since he didn't play last year in Philly. I am not sure where I'm going to go with this one. Lions are a good team. They regressed a little bit in the offseason. They brought in some key pieces, though. I feel like their D-line still needs some work. Um, we don't know what Jameer Gibbs is going to look like. Again, a bit of a reach. I'm going to go ahead and give this one to the Lions, though. And then this one, we're going to have the Saints beat the Panthers. They split. We're going to have the Saints beat the Giants. The Giants are a good team. However, they regressed. I believe that they've regressed in certain spots that the Saints can take advantage of. Uh, week 16, I'm going to have the Saints over the Rams again. Um... I don't think Matthew Stafford's that guy anymore. Um, I really think that we could see Stetson Bennett at one point. And Matt Stafford's pretty injury prone now, but we got to see. We got to see. Um, week 17, we got Tampa against New Orleans. I just don't see a world where Tampa beats us at all. And then in week 18, you know, at this point, you're 12 and 4. You know, you're going to make the playoffs either way. I feel like. At this point, you want to rust everybody up. No matter what the situations look like, you're probably not getting the one seed. If you do get the one seed, that's great. 
in this situation, I don't think that the one seed is up for grabs. I think that I think that the one seed's probably it's not out of reach, but at this point, I feel like another team will be up there contesting for the one seed, and I feel like this is something you could use, but you don't need. And I feel like making the playoffs, having you know healthy players going into that wild card game. I feel like that might be the the better thing to go for. And so I feel... I feel like fuck it. Because fuck Atlanta. Fuck Atlanta. They're not going to win. I think the Saints take another dub in Atlanta. I feel like at this point... You might be resting starters. Just depends on what everyone else has been doing. Like Atlanta. Or not Atlanta. Like Philly. They could very easily, you know, sneak into that one seed spot. The Vikings could, the Cowboys could, the Niners could. It just all depends on what it looks like at that point. If I'm predicting solely based on what it looks like right now, I think that Saints might actually need to keep their starters in. But if you want to rush your starters, I think Atlanta takes that. But I don't see Atlanta. I don't see us. I don't see us having a reason to rest our starters up to this point. I don't. I don't. I don't see it. So yeah, thirteen and four potentially. You know that is that is probably a ceiling number because, look, man, as Dennis Allen's not a great coach, right? Dennis Allen's not the best coach, but he he's not the worst either. He's not bad. I feel like, I feel like Andy Dalton held a lot of shit back. I feel like if you really look at it last year, there was a lot of games that were lost off of kicks and Mark Ingram stepping out and Mark Ingram's fumbles that caused like a big momentum shift. There's a lot of issues that were solved by not resigning people or doing something to, to, to fill that gap. And I feel like that's what Dennis Allen has done. He's a damn good recruiter, and Mickey Loomis and Kyle Arley, they are damn good negotiators. And they've, they fit in a, um, they fit in a really good type of, you know, offseason to where we grew in a sense on the offensive side of the ball. On the defense, on the defensive side of the ball, we've reinforced. We've Re, revamped our offensive line. We've we've put the building bricks back in place where they were. So, yeah, that's pretty much the season prediction. If you guys believe, if you guys agree with me, drop a like and subscribe. But if you got any anything that may be different, or anything you don't agree with, drop a comment below. Tell me what that might be. I'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, see you guys. Peace.